Hi, I'm Patrick, and this is the mach -E Vlog. Today, we're gonna jump right into this. There is a recall coming for about 30,000 Mustang mach -E's. The earlier ones produced in 2021 and 2022. So let's get started on that right now. Okay, this is good news, bad news. It's never really good news when you have a recall, but it is good news that Ford is now finally taking the next step in this long sort of saga about the high voltage battery junction box. This has been an issue that's sort of been ongoing with the Mach-E for quite a while. They initiated a recall, I believe it was June of 2022, that was a software update. It was 22S41. You may recall getting some over the air updates in regards to this. Some people went to the dealer and got this update, but most of us got that via an over the air update. And the whole idea was it was supposed to detect and uh, sort of like give early warning of any high voltage battery junction box failures that were coming and prevent you from like getting stranded or your car not starting in the morning. If you don't know what the high voltage battery junction box is, Basically, it has uh, contactors in it that engage and disengage the high voltage battery from the powertrain of the Mach-E. What was happening for a lot of people, it was like after they did a fast charge or accelerated really hard, like the next time they went to turn their car on, it just wouldn't engage. The contactors were welded in the open position and it wouldn't engage. So then, of course, if you don't have a high voltage battery connected, you can't drive the car. There were a few instances where apparently it got uh, stuck in the on position. Uh, that was very rare, apparently very, very rare. So all of these details, um, I will put some links down below to the recall, the 2020, uh, the 2022 S41 uh, recall, plus this new one, some links to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration pages, as well as how you can check your, your VIN to see if you're affected by the recall. Um, let me dive into some of the, the info here. Before we go too far, I wanna like make it clear which ones are actually being recalled. So if you have a Mach-E that was made between May 27, 2020, basically that's when they first started making the Mach-E, up until May 24th, 2022, then you may be in this recall. Right now, this recall is only affecting uh, extended range mach -E's. if you have a standard range battery, you're not affected. So that's one difference between the this recall and the previous one that was 22S41, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Apparently it's gonna affect about 30,000 US mach -E's. Um, This is not for Canada yet, this is not for Europe yet, but I imagine that it's just going through the regulatory agencies in those countries, and this recall will come to those countries. I should also make it very clear, this is an advance notice. This recall is coming. They just don't have the complete remedy yet. They uh, have notified dealers that it's coming. They actually put a stop sale on the Mach-E for any cars that have been made in between those dates. Those have probably all been sold unless a dealer sort of like held one as like their demo vehicle. It's never actually been registered. And then now they may want to sell it. They can't do that. but. Those cars are over a year old. So this is, you know, that would be a very, very small percentage. So the stop sale is like no big deal. The biggest impact, of course, is gonna be on all of you that have an extended range made before May 24th, 2022. If you want to look it up, you can like enter your VIN and verify whether or not you're gonna be in this recall. Um, and if, it, if you are, you can't go to the dealer yet. They have the advance notice. They don't have the parts and they don't have the authorization to start doing this recall, even if they do have the parts. Once Ford starts getting the parts out to them and they make this an official recall in the next few days, likely, then you can go ahead and get on the list to get scheduled to get the part replaced. So that's the, the biggest thing. Don't go to your dealer right now demanding the, the part. So the, the reason for this one is uh, the 22S41 remedy has not proactively detected damage to the contactors on the extended range in GT vehicles, which all GTs are extended range, so that makes sense. 
and that can allow the contactor to weld closed or prevent the contactor from properly closing while driving. So that's definitely an issue that's still out there, and this is going to fix that. It sounds like there's going to be uh, some additional software changes, but the biggest thing is that there's going to be a new part. And if you want to see what it looks like, I'll pop up a photo here. It uh, to replace this is this whole front section of the the battery or in the battery case. So they have to drop the battery out, replace the whole box, and then you're good to go. And we we don't really know. It's like we're not experts. There's a lot of uh, people that have better knowledge than I do that are on Mach E4, but nobody really knows what the differences are with the new part. We don't even actually know if it's another uh, new, new part. And I'll explain that in one second, but they think that basically the, the new contactors on the new part are going to be a little bit uh, better quality check, maybe somehow changed internally. So that's the, the whole theory is that like, that's what's being uh, changed on the new high voltage battery junction box. Now, you, you see our Mach-E, our Mach-E uh, was made right after that May 24 uh, uh, switchover date. It was made uh, literally like three days after that uh, or something like that. It was very close right after that, that date. So this car, even though it's a GT, is not affected. Ours is not affected. We got it in July, so um, it, it takes a while to get your, your car once it's built and shipped. So. Basically, uh, if you have a car that's, you know, June or before, or you got it June or before of last year, uh, you definitely want to check your VIN, but it's just a good idea. Put your VIN in the, the website that will link in the description, and you can check to make sure you don't have any other uh, recalls. There's like a, a recall on some mach -E's where the, uh, the plug won't release after um, you do a DC fast charge. So that may be in there for you as well. But the, the big one is the high voltage battery junction box. Um, again, there were like a lot of people having some of these issues. The 22S41 didn't really like prevent it from happening. It sort of detected that it was going to happen and made sure you were able to at least like get home safely, get it over to a dealer and take care of it. I know somebody right now, they, they just went on a long road trip. They got home, they got the error and then um, they took it to the Ford dealer. The Ford dealer is like, you can drive it for the next few days, don't DC fast charge it, and get it back over here when we get the part in. Once they get the part in, uh, previously, like last year, it was taking like two weeks to get the part in, and then it took them a while to get the, the bat uh, high voltage battery dropped to get the high voltage battery junction box replaced. From what I hear now, depending on the dealer, some of them are doing it in little as 48 hours. So you drop it off, they already have the part ready, and then it's just a matter of scheduling it to get on the lift, drop the battery, replace the high voltage battery junction box, and then you're good to go. There is some, you know, a little bit of uh, debate in Mach-E form again. You can read through page after page of this. Uh, some people are worried that this is still not a good fix, that there needs to be like a complete redesign of the high voltage battery junction box. We don't think that's what Ford is doing. And Ford is the only one that really has the data. And, and of course now NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, they probably have a little bit more data on what's going on. But whatever the case, it's now under recall. So at least, you know, this stuff is being tracked. Well, you know, whatever they put in, it'll be covered uh, if there's any future issues with it. Let me see, I know I had some more screenshots here. Just highlighting this next one. Uh, basically it's just, of course, as with any recall, of this nature, you will be notified via first class mail if you are uh, under this recall as well. Don't wait for the mail, go ahead and just keep checking the, the VIN website where you can check your, your recalls and you'll uh, get notified there first if you do that. You'll also uh, get a notification in Ford Pass. So there's multiple ways that you're gonna be notified if yours is affected, but it's pretty simple to see that if your car was made before May 24th, 2022, in its extended range, you are in this recall. There's also some questions of like, if you got, uh, if you had a high voltage battery junction box failure and your part was replaced in the past year, will you still be a part of this recall? That's sort of unknown right now. And I believe part of that is, is like, it depends on what part they put back into your car and is Ford actually putting a, a new, new part. And that's what I was saying is like, after May 24th, 
they started putting a new high voltage battery junction box in the cars. It was a new part number. We don't know if it was actually changed significantly or maybe they were just doing more quality tests to make sure it doesn't have the problems that the earlier ones have. So this new recall, is it gonna be that part that they've been using for the past year or is it gonna be a new, new part? So we don't actually know, which means if you had yours replaced already, do you need to get it replaced again? It's a little bit unsure right now. So just stay tuned, keep checking, and we'll hopefully get more details. Another thing I wanted to bring up, of course, uh, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. They have been involved since August. They have an ongoing investigation into this. So this is actually open on their website. I can put a link to uh, that information as well down in the description. They were looking at 60,000 mach -E's and evaluating the, the data on, on that and all the instances that they had. So um, the original recall, I believe, covered about 48,000 mach -E's. The uh, NHTSA was looking at 60,000 mach -E's for trouble. And then this recall here is affecting 30,000 mach -E's. So it's a little bit confusing potentially like on why the numbers are bouncing around. But that initial number included all of the extended range uh, and standard range mach -E's. Now it's just the extended range that's on this new recall. And I think NHTSA was probably looking at ones beyond that uh, production date of May 24th, making sure that ones made after that are all okay. This gives me at least some comfort in that NHTSA is involved in evaluating the data as well, so that hopefully we can trust that this is a good fix for all of us or for all of you that are among the 30,000 and those that have the standard range. Hopefully that this is a, a good fix for that as well. When NHTSA started their investigation in August uh, 2023, apparently they found 107 vehicles that still had the high voltage battery junction box issue after getting that 22S41 recall. And out of that 107, 100 of those were extended range. So it looks like the vast majority are extended range, but it doesn't look like the standard range is completely out of the woods. But uh, NHTSA as well as Ford are not recommending any action on the standard range at this time. Uh, as we've seen, like this could change again, who knows, but it looks like it's far less prevalent among the standard range cars. Um, I'd love to get more of the data. If we do get any more of that data, I'll definitely come back and, and update the video. But just wanted to get this out there quickly. There's gonna be a lot of information. There's gonna be a lot of headlines about this, I'm sure. So again, it's good news that Ford is gonna go ahead and take care of this. It will be done uh, at your local Ford dealer that's EV certified. There's about, there's close to 2000 EV certified dealers that should be able to handle this. Don't rush in and demand that it get gets done right now, but it's not a bad idea that as soon as the the recall is uh, fully released, talk to your dealer, be proactive, get on the list if you want to get this done quickly. If you can't get it done, um, you know, there's a lot of questions about like, is it okay to drive your Mach-E? And there's a lot of people that are, you know, they've been driving that have had no failures. And you got to remember that sometimes like when we're looking at this, it's like, uh, 107 failures sounds bad, but when you're talking about 30,000 cars, that's still a very small number. So hopefully none of you will ever be affected by this, but this recall will hopefully prevent it from definitely never happening to any of you. So it's gonna take them a while, I'm sure, to get all of these parts made. There, ha There's no estimate on availability of like when the, when the parts are gonna be out there, and who knows, the strike could affect that as well. We, you know, we, there's just a lot of unknowns. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Uh, again, check the description. I wanna put links if you wanna read up on like what the high voltage battery junction box does, uh, people that are sort of analyzing like all the different components. You can dive into all of that. We'll put links to all of that information. We'll put links to all the documents that I, I put up on the screen, links to where you can put the VIN uh, for your mach -E in and, and check it out. So we're gonna put the, all of that in, but uh, just wanted to get this information out quickly. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be covering this in the next few days. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to our patron members. As always, we have our Whisper Engage and Unbridled. Hopefully all of you are okay as well. And just remember, whatever you drive, 
hopefully without a high voltage battery junction box failure. Enjoy the ride. Bye.